We are just three days away from WWDC 2023. This is going to be Apple's biggest event and not just because they're going to be unveiling new pieces of software like they do at the Worldwide Developers Conference, like the new version of iOS, macOS and watchOS, but actually we're going to be getting certain pieces of hardware that will change the way you interact with technology, new product lines that we've never seen before from Apple. And in this video, I'm going to be going through some of the predictions and what to expect from WWDC 2023. So let's get into software. Of course, we're going to be getting iOS. 17 which will support most iPhones. I believe the iPhone 10 and below may not be getting iOS 17 which is a little bit unfortunate but may be a time for you to upgrade if you do have the iPhone 10. Otherwise Mac Rumors tells us which is a pretty accurate source that we're going to be getting live widgets. This is awesome. So for those of you who love using widgets on your iPhone like myself they're pretty you know plain and they just give you information. Live widgets may give us the opportunity to actually interact with these and click on certain toggles, add new calendar events and do things that you couldn't do before instead of having to go into the actual app which is a very very welcome change along with this the dynamic island may also be getting certain upgrades so for those people who have the iphone 14 pro or 14 pro max the dynamic island is a little bit limited in what it can do it usually just retracts and goes back to how it is depending on which apps you open whether it's the phone or the stopwatch now it may give us even more features like your notifications opening through the dynamic island which will look a lot more fluid and cleaner for those with the newer iphones Control Center is also going to be getting a full on redesign, which is really nice to see because unlike, you know, the current Control Center, which has been basically the same thing since iOS 11, we're going to have something that's fresh and new, whether it's the way you increase the brightness or change the volume, it's going to be a very welcome revamped design. For those with the iPhone 14 Pro, the always on display is going to be looking a lot more fresh. But the main feature with the always on display is this brand new horizontal nightstand that's rumored to be present in iOS 17. This means that when you stick your iPhone in horizontal mode, say on a MagSafe charger, it will probably display really key information like your calendar, maybe what the weather is going to be like the next day. Imagine a Google Home-like device, but with a screen. That's what your iPhone will feel like. This might be the first steps into Apple introducing a HomePod with a display, and the iPhone will sort of give you a demo of that when you put it in this nightstand mode. Now, the lock screen, last year we got lock screen widgets, which was really cool. This year, we're probably going to get more widgets to add on to that, along with the clock giving us more fonts and different sizes, which I think is a really nice thing, because the clock to me is a bit too big on iOS 16. And what's very cool is you can probably share your lock screen with your friends and family. So how many times have you seen your friends and family have really sick wallpapers on their iPhone, but they always forget where they got it from. Now they can literally share it to you, maybe through iMessage, and then you can use that as your own, which I think will be very cool. Now, those are some of the features that we're going to be getting on iOS 17. But when it comes to the apps, we're going to be getting a brand new journaling app. Now, I know journaling is pretty popular with the entrepreneurs on YouTube right now. And this will be a very welcome change, especially because it will sync with all your Apple devices and will be kind of like a health app and a note app put together, uh, almost as though your Apple Watch always asks you questions as to how you're doing. That's kind of what iOS will do now. Talking about health, that does link to the health app because the health app will be getting a redesign. This is something that's very necessary as very few people use health and giving it a redesign may allow more people to actually utilize that. Apple Music finally is getting a redesign. This is something that I would really like because Apple Music right now is a bit of a mess in my opinion and the way it's structured just looks very awkward. I think if we had nice tiles to get to our music and playlist, that would be very, very clean. Apparently, Wallet is going to be getting a refresh where everything will be more organized and you select if you want to view your credit cards or your coupons or even your car keys. Now, speaking of car keys, this does link to Apple's CarPlay, which was unveiled last year and it looked insane. We got a, a sneak peek as to what the future of it could look like. So when looking at iOS, it seems like a situation where we're getting new features, but it does kind of link to future products that will be coming out. One more thing, this is crazy. Apple only in the EU is going to be allowing side loading. Now side loading means you could potentially download apps on your iPhone from third party app stores like the Play Store, which will be insane. And this links to watchOS 10. watchOS 10 is going to be the biggest software update at this Apple event. It's going to be a complete revamp, almost like going from iOS 6 to iOS 7, but for the Apple Watch. We're no longer gonna have that honeycomb design for the apps and instead it's going to be a three by three aspect ratio with all your apps laid out in a grid with widgets as well, which I think will be so much easier to use. 
and this may also allow side loading along with folders for your apps. Honestly, I'm just very excited for watchOS. It's going to be a completely new look and I think it will be so much easier to use because again, this honeycomb thing to me was really weird. I think it just made getting to apps just very complicated. Now, macOS. macOS, we don't really know too much about and I feel like that either means that it's going to be a big upgrade or just small bug fixes. I honestly think it's going to be small bug fixes and just extra little features here and there because we just got macOS Big Sur a couple years ago which gave us the whole new redesign. Um, in terms of the name, here's a list of 15 that are possible names of this year's macOS. I honestly am putting my money on macOS Redwood or Mac macOS Sequa. Sequ I don't know how you pronounce it but I feel like that's what it could be called. So I guess we just have to wait for the 5th of June for that. iPadOS 17. This is basically just going to have the apps that we mentioned from iOS 17 like the journaling app, the health app, along with lock screen widgets which finally is now going to be coming to the iPad and that's basically it. Okay so now that all that software is out of the way and we're getting these exciting upgrades to all our devices, hardware is where this event is going to take a real turn. The first crazy device we're getting is the 15 inch MacBook Air. Now I'm very excited for this because the MacBook Air has never exceeded 13 inches and a lot of consumers have to spend tons of money just to get a larger screen buying the 16 inch MacBook Pro which to be honest there's a lot of unnecessary power for many people out there so this 15 inch MacBook Air will bring better speakers a better battery life and a larger quality display both in resolution and in size which is amazing also it will be powered with the M2 processor which we've seen in the 13 inch MacBook Air as well so no M3 at this event but the Mac Studio which was unveiled a couple months ago had the M1 Ultra and M1 Max the new MacBook Pros got the M2 Pro and M2 Max. So it only makes sense that Apple also unveils a new Mac Studio just upgrading the processors giving us an M2 Max and an M2 Ultra to keep those up to date with the rest of the line. Now the Mac Pro which is supposed to be Apple's most powerful and most crazy computer we're probably not going to see any new version of that at this event simply because this event is going to be targeted around the brand new Apple VR and AR headset. This is going to be an entirely new Apple product category. We've never seen something like this before from Apple and it's kind of going to be like the Apple Watch that we got from Apple back in 2014. Now this VR and AR headset is very much likely going to happen. Number one because there's a lot of VR content creators invited to this Apple event and also we've been getting rumors of this headset for years and Apple has heavily promoted augmented reality. Even in this LiDAR sensor in this iPad, augmented reality has been of massive emphasis for Apple. Now this VR AR headset is said to be powered by the brand new XROS operating system. We don't know how that works right now. It's going to be unveiled at this event. I'm very excited to see what it will look like. Now it's going to be made apparently of carbon fiber, glass and aluminium. These three materials are very light and will make it very comfortable to wear and will be a big source of competition against things like the Oculus headset which is made of plastic and just has a lot going on. To keep this product very light it is rumored that the battery won't even be in the headset and will be something that you wear on your waist which I think is a little bit weird it reminds me of like a Walkman back in the 1990s um, so I'm not sure if Apple is going to do that but it's said that this battery will be two iPhone 14 thick and you'll wear it on your waist as you put the headset on. Its front display will have an OLED panel which apparently will show your facial expressions. I don't know what that necessarily means. Is it digital where it's showing you your eyes on a digital screen or is it see-through? We'll have to wait and see. It's also going to have a changeable band kind of like the Apple Watch. I think it might be some sort of sport band which could be changed to a leather band or a metal band depending on where you are and why you're using it. It will also have a digital crown. Now the reason for this kind of like the Apple Watch is that with this headset you can switch between virtual reality and augmented reality. Virtual reality is when you're in a whole nother world kind of like Ready Player One but augmented reality is when you're basically looking at everything on earth in your room but with things on top. So for example you could be using your MacBook and when you put this headset on in your room you can add on a whole nother display through the headset and that's augmented reality. So the digital crown will basically be called the reality dial which is such a sick name and will switch between augmented reality and virtual reality. Now in terms of the specs it's said that this will have two M2 processors so that's the power of two MacBook Airs inside of this headset. It will have dual 4K micro LED panels inside the headset which means that you'll get a total 8K resolution when looking at stuff. This looks like you're in a whole nother world and it's so realistic that it's it's crazy so I really can't wait to get my hands on this thing. It's supposed to have 12 internal and external 
external cameras. Again, mapping around uh, the area that you're in to give you the best quality uh, display. And the reason for these cameras is that there's apparently no remote. So if you buy an Oculus headset to play games, you get this kind of disc remote. Apple is not going to be giving you that. Apparently, it's all going to use hand gestures. And speaking of gestures, this thing apparently will unlock through your eyes. So just like your iPhone unlocks through facial recognition and the Mac unlocks through Touch ID, this will unlock through a retina eye scan, kind of like the iris scanner on the old Samsung devices, which again will be very crazy. Now this is gonna be $3,000 and honestly, I don't know who's gonna be buying this. I do wanna check it out, but is this the future of Apple? Is this the future of technology? Are we gonna be spending our lives in completely new world? Who knows? For now, I feel like this is mainly gonna be used for Apple Fitness Plus, maybe Apple TV Plus as well. You could watch movies with your friends sitting next to you as Memojis and you could be in a whole nother world. Maybe even FaceTime, it could allow for a better experience being more immersed in your friend's world while he can see your bedroom that would be very very cool but that's basically what we're going to be expecting at this event crazy new stuff now the event is on the 5th of june and i'm going to be covering all of that stuff when it happens so make sure you're subscribed turn on the notifications and yeah i'll see you when this event takes place i can't wait for these new products and i'm sure you can't either so hopefully this apple event is going to be just as exciting as we expect but other than that, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.